to introduce um, Aline Zanardini from, um, I say Pennsylvania, but I think now you are in the Netherlands. I don't say that. <laughs> Utrecht, maybe? All right, yeah. No, I'm in Leiden. Leiden. Sorry, sorry, Leiden, Leiden University. And she will talk about the stability of Alphen pencils of index two. Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, well, so uh, before I start, let me thank uh, Paola and uh, Alessandra first for organizing this workshop and the second for the opportunity for me to speak here today. Um, so thank is about uh, some results that I obtained in, um, as part of my PhD thesis. And uh, what I would like to do today is to present uh, some explicit stability criteria in the sense of GIT for certain pencils of plane curves of degree D, uh, sorry, of degree six, which are called um, half O pencils of uh, index two. Um, and the group that's acting is um, SO3. And the reason that I'm interested in this um, half of pencils is because uh, there's a, a very rich uh, geometry attached to them. And um, I hope I, I can convey uh, a little bit of that, uh, at least um, in my talk. So um, here is uh, roughly um, what my plan is today. So I want to start uh, with some motivation and I want to say something about uh, exactly what is the problem that I'm interested in. Um, I already said something but I want to say a bit more and um, of course then I, I will lay out uh, the mathematical setup um, so that they can um, state the, the main results. So what uh, what are these uh, stability criteria? And hopefully I'll have the time at, at the end to illustrate one of these results with a very concrete example. And uh, perhaps I'll, I'll also say something um, about the um, higher index. Okay, so, um, and, and before I forget, everything is over the, the complex numbers. So, so here's um, how I wanna start. Um, I have drawn this, this picture here, which is my illustration of uh, very classical and well-known correspondence between um, pencils of plane cubics and um, rational elliptic surfaces with a section. So uh, if one starts with two um, plane cubics, so this determines uh, a pencil, in particular a rational map from P2 to P1, which is not going to be defined precisely on the nine points where the, the two cubics intersect. And uh, we can um, resolve this indeterminacy by blowing up the plane at the nine points. And then what we get is a irrational elliptic surface with a, a section. And conversely, if uh, I start with such, a, a, such, such an object, um, a rational elliptic surface, then uh, with a section, we can show it arises from a, a pencil of cubics uh, this way. And uh, But why am I telling you about this? Um, the point is that uh, the, the correspondence that I'm, I'm trying to illustrate here and I'm recalling, um, it generalizes. So one can consider uh, more general, say, rational elliptic surfaces uh, where we don't have a section, we have exactly one multiple fiber, and um, the geometric objects that are going to replace the question marks that I put here are precisely these uh, half of pencils. So um, one of my goals today is to try to um, explore this uh, more, more general correspondence. And um, what I mean uh, more concretely by that is the following. So Miranda in the 80s, he described the stability, the JT stability of pencils of plane cubics in terms of the types of singular fibers that appear in the, in the corresponding um, rational elliptic surfaces. And um, today, what I would like to do is to describe the, the GIT stability of um, half of pencils of index two, um, also in terms of the um, types of singular fibers that are gonna appear 
in the corresponding in this corresponding more general um, rational elliptic surfaces. But I would like to point out that the approach um, that uh, I'm going to be using is different than Miranda's. And uh, in particular, I will try to um, highlight how this one can how one can relate the stability of a Hoffel pencil to um, the stability of the curves that lie on it, and in particular um, to a birational invariant called uh, the log canonical threshold. Okay, so um, so far I haven't been uh, too precise. In particular, I haven't given you a definition yet uh, of uh, what a Hoffel pencil is, but this was uh, sort of just my introduction, and now I will lay out uh, the mathematical setup and uh, some some background and so on. So, so let's uh, start uh, with the first definition. Um, so, in this talk, um, a rational elliptic surface. It's going to be a smooth rational surface Y together with a vibration to P1 such that the generic fiber is a smooth curve of genus 1. And my moreover, we assume this is uh, relatively minimal, meaning that there are no minus 1 curves in any fiber. So note that I am not assuming that uh, there is a section. Um, so, so this is my definition for us. That's a, a rational elliptic surface. Okay, and then um, we can show the following result. Um, I'm calling here proposition, uh, which you can find, for instance, in Dogachev and Kosak's book and on uh, Enhika's surfaces. And um, the result uh, is the following. So given any surface Y satisfying the definition that I just gave you, um, so given any rational elliptic surface, there exists some integer M greater or equal than one, and a birational map pi from the surface to, to the plane P2, such that if I compose F with pi inverse, then I get a half or pencil of index M. And um, in, in particular, this is, it, can be written as a uh, road here. Um, and uh, so what is a half a pencil? It's um, a pencil of index M. It's a pencil of curves of degree three M with nine base points of multiplicity M. And, uh, and, and then in this talk, I, I'm interested in, in the particular case um, where M equals two, so, so now we have um, a definition, and uh, the next thing I would like to do is uh, to give you a, a very concrete example. And uh, okay, but before that, let me just maybe make a remark that uh, if one starts with such an object with a pencil like this, and uh, you blow up the the nine <laughs> base points until you separate the pencil, then uh, uh, you get. Uh, uh, a rational elliptic surface uh, satisfying the, the definition that I just gave. And then, uh, and hence, uh, um, we have that uh, more general correspondence that I was telling you about uh, in the beginning. Okay, so um, here is uh, an example of a half a pencil um, of index two and the corresponding uh, rational elliptic surface. So in the left, what I'm representing is uh, two generators. Um, so uh, I have this, this uh, curve B, which is a triple conic in, in purple. And then I have exactly one multiple cubic with multiplicity two, which consists of a conic together with a line. And the, these two curves, they are intersected, intersecting as, um, as shown. And uh, what we do is that we blow up uh, one of these uh, points three times, and then we blow up the other point six times in order to separate the pencil. And if we do that, we obtain a, a surface Y that uh, has a genus one vibration down to P1. And on that, we're gonna have exactly one multiple fiber with multiplicity two, which in Kodaira's notation is of type I2. So we have these two rational curves intersecting as uh, I show in the picture in, in green. And uh, you can show that you also have this other uh, singular fiber of uh, type uh, three star in Kodaira's notation. So if you look at the duo graph of it is the extended 
jinking diagram of type uh, E7. And then <clears throat> the strict transform of the, the triple conic is going to be that uh, rational curve in purple that uh, I drew in the picture. OK, so this is the kind of geometric object that I'm interested in, these uh, certain tenses of uh, um, plane curves of degree six, which are very special, and there's some very rich geometry um, associated to them. And um, what I want to do is to describe uh, their GIT stability. So the next step is to tell you something about the, the GIT setup. And uh, what I would like to do is to start uh, quite general and then apply um, to our situation. Okay, so um, this is the, the GIT setup. Um, so let's uh, consider a group G, a reductive group G, uh, which is acting on some projective variety X. And um, let's choose uh, an ample line bundle on uh, on X, call it uh, L, so that uh, we use some power of it to embed X in projective space. And uh, let's also choose a lift of the action of G on X to the total space of uh, the line bundle L, which is linear uh, on the fibers. Then by definition, the, the corresponding um, GIT quotient to this data is this projective variety that uh, I'm writing here. And note that in particular, um, this comes with a natural quotient map, um, which is only rational. And this, this, this quotient map that I'm calling here pi, um, it's not going to be defined precisely on the points where all the, the invariant sections vanish. So these, let's say, bad points is what we call unstable points. And uh, then the, the complement of that, so the points where pi is defined, are called uh, semi-stable points. And among the semi-stable points, we have uh, the, the stable points, which by definition are those whose orbits are closed and uh, of maximal dimension. And then one can ask uh, how, how exactly uh, uh, we find these points and then we have tools for that. And uh, it goes as follows. So, uh, our group is acting, G is acting linearly on, on X in, embedded in projective space. So it means that the action is going to lift to the, to the affine cone. And then we have the following uh, criteria. Um, so if I, I pick a little X in, in my variety X and I choose a lift uh, X tilde, then my little x is going to be semi-stable if and only if uh, zero is not in the closure of the orbit of the lift. And uh, it's going to be stable if and only if the orbit of the lift is closed and uh, its stabilizer is uh, finite. Now with that, note that in the particular case, when the group G is just a multiplicative group, then, so the action is just some finite dimensional representation where the, the, the vector space phi, it splits as a sum of one dimensional um, vector spaces vi, and um, the analysis of the stability um, is looking at the sign um, of the weight. Um, and uh, in, in, in fact, is, uh, this is the typical case in the sense that it suffices for energy, it suffices to look at one parameter subgroups of G and uh, look at the sign uh, of its weights. And uh, that's precisely the, um, the Hilbert uh, Mumford criteria. Okay, so, so this is just a, a recollection of the general setup of, uh, for the GIT. And now I want to apply this um, to our situation. So uh, our group G is, is going to be SO3. And our X is going to be um, the space of uh, plane curves of degree six, which I'm going to identify with the Grassmannian. Oh, there's a mistake on the slide. I'm sorry. With, which I'm going to identify with the Grassmannian of lines in the space of uh, all pencils of plane curves of degree six. And um, and then on the Grassmannian, there's, there's just one line bundle, and I, I use it to embed in projective space, and that's the, the, the Plucker embedding. And um, 
but let me let me tell you uh, now what uh, exactly the, the Plucker coordinates are. And uh, so I will establish some, some notation that I'll try to, to use uh, throughout the, the rest of the talk. So if I have um, a pencil with curves of degree six, and I, I choose so two generators, so they're given by the zeros of these two polynomials, then what the Plucker embedding is doing is, is the following. So the, the coordinates are going to be exactly the all the two by two minors um, as I wrote here, and uh, I'm going to denote the, these coordinates by m sub i j k l. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you this because um, so we just saw that one of the tools we have for for the DIT analysis is the the Hubert uh, Munford criterion. And uh, what I want to tell you next is how one parameter subgroups of G are going to act on the on the Plucker coordinates and then you state the, the Hubert Munford criteria and, and, and so on. Okay, so here is how a, a one parameter subgroup is gonna act on the, on the Plucker coordinates. It's gonna be simply um, multiplication by T to some exponent and uh, this exponent uh, can be make, made uh, very precise and uh, it's uh, what I write here. And uh, okay. And uh, with that, once I know how a, a one parameter subgroup acts on the on the Plucker coordinates, then I can define, I'm sorry, I can define an analog of um, the Hubert Mumford um, weight, which in here I'm calling omega of p comma lambda. So I fix a one parameter subgroup and I associate uh, to the pens of these this number here. And the reason that I'm defining it like this and not the usual way is just because it makes it a bit easier to relate the, the stability of the pencil to this birational invariant that I mentioned in the beginning, the, the log canonical threshold. Okay, so, so with this um, definition and, uh, and, and this uh, whole setup that I just mentioned, I can finally state the Hubert Mumford criterion for uh, pencils of plane cestics under the action of SO3. And the statement is as follows. So a pencil um, is going to be unstable, respectively non-stable, if and only if I can find one parameter subgroup, lambda such that this, this fraction involving this omega for P um, is, is greater than four if it's unstable and respectively greater or equal um, if it's non-stable. Now, observe that the group G SL3 is acting on the, not only on the space of, of uh, pencils, but also on the space of curves. And in, in particular, I can, uh, I can define this, this omega for the curves line on the pencil, and I can talk about the stability of the curves that lie on my pencil P. And, um, and in particular, I can also compare these, uh, this omega for, for, for the pencil P uh, with the omega for the curves on it. And that is gonna be useful um, uh, on when relating the stability of the pencil to, this, uh, to the log canonical threshold. And um, the statement uh, one gets by doing this, this comparison and considering the, the action um, also for the for the on the space of curves uh, is the following. So one can prove this theorem, uh, which says the following. So assume my pencil um, contains a curve such that um, the log canonical threshold uh, of it equals alpha. If my pencil is unstable, respectively not stable then I can show the pencil actually contains another curve such that its log canonical threshold is bounded from above by this fraction involving alpha. And um, okay, so, so I, I never told you uh, what this log canonical threshold is. And uh, so let me make a remark and, uh, and tell you that, um, so this is a number that one associates to a pair um, X comma delta, so X is a variety and delta is a choice of divisor on it. And this is measuring, uh, so in the case of say X is moved, this is measuring say how 
singular delta is. And the smaller this number is, the, the more singular. Um, so, and one can show this is a rational number and uh, uh, between the zero and one is smaller or equal than, than one. Okay, so the to our purpose is that it's, it's not gonna be um, too important to, to say uh, more about the, um, the, the meaning uh, of, of, uh, of this, but maybe I can say something about it uh, later if I have the time. Um, what I just wanted to point out is that, for instance, uh, there's this um, condition on assuming that the, the pencil contains this curve such that the local clinical threshold equals alpha. And um, you can think of, uh, so maybe you're interested in the case where P contains a smooth member, and then you can take as alpha just uh, alpha equals one. And um, okay, so it's it's not uh, too strange the, the, this condition. Um, okay, so this is um, um, I'm talking at this this theorem is a, cri a criterion for the stability of any pencil of plane statistics. And what I want to do now is to focus on the case of uh, half of pencils of index two um, viewed as a point in, in this gross minus, so viewed as a, a pencil of uh, plane statistics. So from now on, um, P is going to be a half of pencil of index two, and Y is going to denote um, the corresponding rational elliptic surface. and. Uh, and the first result that we can prove uh, that says something about the stability of P is the following. We can show that if the pencil is non-stable, then um, the corresponding surface, it has to contain a non-reduced fiber. And moreover, if the pencil is actually unstable, then the surface um, Y, it has to contain a fiber of type uh, two star, three star, or four star. So we eliminate um, the i n star. So on the right, um, uh, I tell you what are the, the possibilities for, for non-reduced fibers. This has uh, been classified by Kodera. Um, and uh, the, in the picture, what I have is the, the dual graph of the fiber and the numbers are representing the, the multiplicities of um, each component. Okay, so now um, how does... Uh, when you go about uh, proving this, um, I will try to, to sketch the proof. Um, so I just showed you um, maybe two slides ago, I think uh, this theorem that had something to do with this log canonical threshold. The point is that for half a pencil of index two, we have this, this curve, which consists of uh, a double cubic. And one can show that the singularities for that cubic are not so bad. So in fact, the invariant is exactly one half. And then in the theorem that I showed you, you can take as alpha just alpha equals one half. And uh, the theorem is gonna tell us that if my pencil um, is non-stable or unstable, then I can find another curve in my pencil that I'm calling here B such that its log canonical threshold is bounded from above by um, that fraction involving alpha, which in this case is gonna be exactly one half. And the, the point is that, uh, my claim is that the, the fiber that's associated to this curve, it has to be non-reduced. And the reason for that is that uh, one can show that if F were uh, reduced then the, the opposite, uh, inequality would hold. So for reduced fibers, the lock and uncle threshold has to be larger than a half. Okay, so we know that in any case, um, the, the fiber associated to this curve B, it has to be non-reduced. Non what it remains to be uh, to show is that uh, in the case where P is unstable, then uh, this fiber F cannot be of type I n star. And the point is, um, for non-reduced fibers, I have this further inequality here. Um, I can bound the lock and uncle threshold for the curve B from below by the lock and uncle threshold of the fiber. 
And for fibers of type uh, IN star, the, the ladder, so the lock and uncle threshold of the fiber it is exactly one half. Um, and, and that shows uh, if P is unstable, then I can't have uh, that uh, type of fiber. Okay. And uh, so observe that um, this statement is of the form. Um, so I assumed my pencil was non stable or unstable, and then I could conclude something about the types of uh, fibers in the corresponding surface. So a natural question, of course, is what about the converse? And, uh, and here's what I can say, which is actually an if and only if statement. I can show that a, a half a pencil of index two is un unstable if and only if the corresponding surface, it contains a fiber of type uh, two star. And moreover, the curve associated to it is um, unstable. And uh, you can see, for instance, and you can see how the how the stability of the curves on the pencil play a role in, in the in the stability um, criteria. Okay, um, so I have I think I have a few minutes, so I um, maybe I'll have time for the example. But before that, uh, let me just. Um, say something else about this result. So um, as I said, we see that the, the stability of P is, is playing a role. And one can ask, so do we know what the, how um, the curve P looks like? And in fact, we do. So one can show that the curve P, it has to be one of the following. So we have five possibilities for the curve B. Um, so a triple conic, a triple line with a cubic, and that line is a inflection line, or two triple lines, or a conic in the line with multiplicity four, and or a line and another line with multiplicity five. And in this list, um, just the first one, the triple conic is semi-stable. So for all for all the rest, um, um, B the curve B is uh, unstable. Okay, so I, I think I, I will skip the example, unfortunately, but I will say something about uh, um, higher index because that's also um, another natural question. So uh, we could uh, ask, can we say something about the stability of half offenses of index M more generally viewed as points inside uh, the space of all pencils of curves of degree 3m. And um, yes, we can, and we have the, these two results. Um, and the reason I, I decided to, to present this is because uh, in particular, we have this, this last statement here, theorem five, which is very similar to the one that I showed to you in the index two case. So, um, in general, for any index, I can show that if my pencil is not stable, then my surface Y, it has to contain a non-reduced fiber. So of type uh, N star, two star, three star, or four star, which is, which um, by the way, I didn't mention this before. So this is uh, something that uh, holds uh, for M equals one. So the case of, of cubics, that uh, was uh, the work of Miranda from, from the 80s. And the proof of this, this statement is exactly, um, essentially the same as uh, the one that I showed you. So that's uh, why I decided to present the, the sketch of the proof. Uh, and the point is that uh, we have this, uh, this multiple cubic and uh, the lock and uncle threshold is gonna be one over M. And then we can take uh, alpha equals one over M in the theorem and, uh, and, and the same proof uh, um, is gonna work. Um, so I think I, I'm running out of time now. So um, here is just some, some, some references and um, and I'll, I'll stop here. So thank you very much uh, for listening and uh, for the opportunity again. Thank you very much. So are there any questions or comments? So 
it, it, it's not a question, but a, a, a comment uh, to, uh, to, to relate uh, Alina's talk to mine. Uh, so uh, each uh, sextic uh, with uh, 10 nodes uh, de defines uh, a cobal surface. And uh, uh, so it's an interesting question uh, when one considers alpha pencils, so which of them uh, uh, contain rational members? And uh, when they contain rational members, uh, th th this provides a cobalt surface. Uh, yeah, so, so, so when you have a rational uh, sextic uh, with 10 nodes, uh, then on the, on the minimal resolution, uh, its uh, square is minus four. So it, it's uh, exactly the situation I spoke about. So you have a rational surface with minus four curves. Uh, with minus four curves, it's a generic cobalt surface. Okay. So it's not a question, but just a comment. Yes, it's a comment, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I have a, I have a question too, if you don't mind. No, sure. The more of curiosity, uh, why are you always trying to characterize the unstable points rather than the stable points? Okay, that's a... That's a, a very good question. Um, I think that in, in this particular case, it, it was just a matter, it was too hard because uh, it turns out that the, the fibers associated to them um, are these uh, non, are the, the reduced ones essentially. And then, uh, I could not uh, obtain a complete list of what the curve B is. So there are too many possibilities for that. And um, whereas for the non-reduced fibers, I, I was able to do it by hand and really construct all possible examples. So I think that the, that's part of the reason, I guess. Um, okay, uh, thank you. And uh, you can also relate to each pencil. You can uh, also write down a vector field, like a section of the uh, tangent bundle of P2. Uh, mm. Did you think about this relation at all? No, I, I haven't, uh, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for pointing me that out. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you more at some point. Yes. <laughs> I had a question more on a precision about your theorem five. Theorem when you five? Description, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. because you say, so now you are considering index M bigger than one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you say if it's not stable, then it contains an reduced type or uh, fiber of some type. Mm -hmm. So this depends on M. So you have um, M uh, some specific value, then you can precise which kind of fiber or just... Uh... Oh, um... <laughs> No, this is um, this is very general. I mean, this is true for any M, but I do not know if, say, I, I choose an M very large, then maybe I can eliminate one of these cases. I haven't uh, thought about that. Okay, that's a very good point. Yes, it's probably that, that might be true, because where when M gets too large, then the the projective space where I'm embedding this is too huge. It's, it's very large. So it may be that uh, everything is gonna be say stable or something. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there more questions or comments? Otherwise we thank uh, Alina again, thank you very much.